okay. Maybe, maybe I just three. missed it. Okay. Yes. Maybe but it was one kingdom name. Correct. It's different. That's that's possible. Yeah. yeah. Victoria. What is your Victoria. is Victoria your name? Victoria is full name. I'm short is Vika. Vika. So I go go by Vika. Vika. Okay. So yeah, uh, I, and I and I really liked um, how you kind of really took the principle of the the essence of the of the principles and then applied it in your life. So we finish first verse, uh, which is Vacho Vegam Manasa Krodha Vegam, Jiva Vegam Udarupastha Vegam, Etan Vegan Vidishaheta Dhira Sarvam Apimam Prathvim Satishya. Now, you know this verse. One who can do the following A, B, C, D, E, F, he becomes a Paramahamsa, a very, very advanced devotee who can make disciples all over the world. So, even if we are not at that level, we should not feel discouraged in Bhakti Yoga. <laughs> because this is, this, these, if, if somebody can do this, and if somebody can do this consistently, um, and if you really think about it, Vacho Vegam, Manhasa Krodha Vegam define person's character. Because what is in my mind will eventually come out of my tongue. Right? Eventually, sooner or later, and especially in close relationships, <laughs> you know, we end up speaking what is in our mind. So it really defines our character, what is in our mind. Vacho Vegam, Manhasa Krodha Vegam. And Jiva Udara Upastha. This defines our integrity because this nobody can know what I'm doing. So the first line defines our character, second line defines our integrity. And those who can control it, who's a dhira, he becomes qualified to make disciples all over the world. Meaning he becomes a bona fide Jagat Guru. He becomes a Paramahamsa, he becomes a Mahabhagavat. So even though there may be some some setbacks and letdowns and you know I'm not at that level yet but what I can do is I can take the principle I can take this principles and I can aspire to do better progress is always a step in the right direction also I would like you to as we are reading nectar of instruction I would like you to just read one verse from Bhagavatam 11 20 26 and 27 11th canto chapter 20 verse 26 and 27 these two verses and Srimad Bhagavatam, it's doable. Just two verses, okay? I'm not going to do the whole canto. We'll divide it into two verses. It, it, this talks about 20, 26, and 27. So 11.20 per 26. So when we say 4, 13, 21, yeah, okay. In that, it's a very <laughs> interesting phenomenon described, uh, 11, 20, 26, 27, very, very beautiful, important verses. So, yes, we have to take nectar of instruction in that way. Now we are looking at text 2, and text 2 and text 3 go together. They talk about six, pr text 2 is six things which destroy bhakti, and bhakti is devotion to the Supreme Lord or maybe a quest for spirituality. These six things in general, these are the non-sectarian principles, these principles destroy our quest of self-realization. Okay, okay. And then the next six principles will aid us in our quest for self-realization. So if you want to live a life in which we feel spiritually alive, spiritually enthused, spiritually awakened, balanced, we should focus on these principles. And focus on these principles. Now, first one, first two go together. Things which do not help our, our spiritual life, they sort of tend to wake us, take us, veer us towards one extreme, which is eating more than necessary or collecting more funds than required. Both of them are in the category of Atyahara, okay? And then Prayasa, over endeavoring for mundane things that are very difficult to obtain. Now, Atyahara and Prayasa, Prayas always follows Atyahara. They kind of 
फॉलोइंग प्रयास फॉलो सकते हैं इन द पर्पोर्ट प्रभुपाद डेफिनेशन ऑफ अत्याहार अति आहार आहार मीन्स फूड ओवर ईटिंग ओके वी नो दैट ओवर ईटिंग इज नॉट वेरी गुड बट ऑल्सो ओवर इंडल्जिंग इन एनी ऑफ द सेंस ग्रेटिफिकेशन इज नॉट वेरी गुड Prabhupada also talks about atyahara means whimsical desires for economic prosperity whimsical desires now what i liked about the purport i'm going to summarize the purport for you the first two paragraphs of purport are very i would say revolutionary why are they revolutionary if you guys read it did anything struck you from the first two three paragraphs of this purport of this verse yes to me it's like how the there is like internal external and marginal preferences and then saying where like what do you what do you do like you, you belong to a certain like part in state like it controls you correct so either internal and that's where pretty much you you want a goodness uh huh if you are um you're doing devotional service to God and then your external is where you are um, a slave of your um, sen- senses. Uh-huh. I did not really see the marginal though, like explanation of, but I guess it's somewhere in the stuck in, li- in the limbo. In the limbo. Yeah. The marginal energy is us. Well, yeah, I guess in Bhagavad Gita, the, the God, like Krishna says that there are like eternal, um, and you are you, you are in the border you are like first you're in the border and you have to to decide which side to take correct so it's called the tathastha shakti the the tathastha or marginal is the shore of the ocean what is the shore of the ocean called in sanskrit <coughs> tat yeah, the, the word is called yeah. tata and the wave comes and the wave recedes krishnera tathastha shakti Bheda, Bheda, Prakash. So it's always that. It's it's always the 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 sh- that that line, that line tata. It's always getting wet, and it is always becoming dry. And Prabhupada writes a very interesting idea here of atyahara. In the first three verses, he explains that devotees or those who practice bhakti. or take shelter of the internal potency of the lord by constant engagement by constant engagement in devotional service they do not have to work very hard did you saw that they don't have to work very hard the whole world is operating under the platform that we should work very hard mm-hmm. that we have to work very hard to be happy prabhupada is saying something else here that human life is not meant to working very hard that the fundamental purpose of human life is to actually take shelter of the internal potency of the lord and that person doesn't have to work very hard so prabhupad is talking to one person and he says that actually our whole per platform is to become lazy so the person says what, what do you mean you have to become lazy he says see you see rich people they make a little house in the woods in the jungle and they enjoy there don't they then the he said no but prabhupad you know five days a week we have to work hard so prabhupad said you work hard five days of the week so you can relax the remaining two days so what is ultimate purpose here what is the ultimate goal is to relax <laughs> one time in la he is taking a morning walk on monday by the venice beach so all the cars are going round round monday morning and prabhupad said see the reason they have to work so hard is because they are attached to he used the word sex life but basically it's basically the whole material idea of civilization he says 
says, because I'm not attached to it, we don't have to work very hard. Krishna provides for everything. So this idea is that, that it is a true idea <coughs> that if a person genuinely takes shelter of the internal potency of the Lord, he can engage in Krishna consciousness. He can sit at one place and chant Hare Krishna. It is not necessary to work hard. It is not necessary to entangle or complicate one's life beyond a certain point. This is the idea I want you to walk out with. It is, it is an idea. He talks about whimsical material prosperity, factories, slaughterhouses, brothels. All of this is Atyahara. All of this is Atyahara. But would you say this, like even then with family, entanglement with family, or with you are anything like nationalism or some, or even... Humanitarianism, altruism, nationalism, socialism, capitalism, communism, all of these isms are materially devised principles which do not bring real happiness or peace to everybody. Very good question. Uh, so, so Prabhu, this is a different question. There are two things. There are two things. One is called transcendence, pure devotional service. This nectar of instruction is talking about that internal energy. If you read the purport very carefully, very scrutinizingly, Prabhupada is explaining taking shelter of the internal potency of the Lord. A, a principle lower than that is called varna and ashrama, mm -hmm. what you are talking about, protecting the country, varna mm -hmm. and ashrama, people who are under the grips of the material energy of the external potency of the Lord, they have to work, they have to work according to their natural propensity. So yes, you know, in that regard, all of that is important. If everybody is following, then there is no need. Then there is no need to protect. Naturally, karuna, compassion, mercy. Now, another interesting point. Prabhupada mentions in the purport, Isha Vasyam Idam Sarvam, right? How much should we work for? Or how much should we acquire? We are talking about ahar. How much should I have? He gives a principle. As much as you need, and you should know everything else belongs to Krishna. Mm. If you follow that principle, automatically peace and prosperity will come in the world. Why is there war? For what? You know, think beyond just ordinary work for one second. See, the purport of NOI are very revolutionary. Why do I? Why am I working so hard? But that is like made like for, for the perfect world, like, like in the times we are living in the practical times. Good. Are even okay. So now we take that principle and we apply in our life. I will tell you very honestly, Abhishek Prabhu, I know a lot of people who take shelter of the internal potency of the Lord and don't necessarily have to work very hard. They work for Krishna. This is a true principle. I think like to me, the way I see it, like the more simple you are, the more um, dedicated to 
God has you on, yes. the easier it gets, A, that you're not really, all those ideas of getting uh, and acquiring all this stuff, they don't drive you crazy. B, God <coughs> actually starts sending you exactly what you need. Because you don't know what you need, only God knows what you need, and He will send you exactly uh, exactly what you need. And that's why a lot of people, like the point of not working hard, A, you just do and you dedicate your service to Krishna so you don't get tired. From my own experience, I realized when I just come to work and things start falling at me and I'm just get absorbed in the whole, like uh, just swarming in, in all of that work. And then when I step out of that situation and I, like yesterday, I didn't know how to solve that situation. There was a report broken for, for this group and I just like, I could not realize, like I could not understand what needs to be done here. And I was like, I went for the water and I'm like, Krishna, could you please just help me like how to figure out. And then I call my coworker over and I'm like, look, listen, I've been looking at it for quite some time. I cannot understand why it's not working. And he came up with the idea that I could not come up with. And we solved this. So it was just like as easy. It got resolved in like five minutes. But I was like feeling myself just... You know, Abhishek, this is a around. principle. Those who chant Hare Krishna, those who actually serve Krishna, they can keep their lives very simple. I also work Abhishek. I have a job. I have to maintain myself, right? Listen, listen, hold on, hold on. Listen. But the idea, the idea is to, anyways, at people minimize and they they tend to, when they get into their 50s and 60s, they minimize their work and they take retirement because the bodies don't function. We are talking about a higher order principle that Krishna provides for those who take shelter of his internal potency. And the idea is not to become more and more entangled with prayasa, with endeavor for things which are too difficult to obtain. So, uh, so my question was not about the points things are making life simple, but that will principle everybody will have to adapt. But like for individual, like suppose like uh, in the time like somebody will have to vote in the time of voting in the democracy. So we have to keep unless we are aware of outside what's happening and we do not make do not uh, choose the right person and we do not have the sense of nationalism or something. So you we might end up making the right uh, wrong people your ruler. Like the next generation comes and if we, they just live to truly by this principle, so they might not be aware of at all because they will be completely disconnected from the why? Because I'm not saying that 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 I agree that with the principle, and that is for the perfect world. But in the times we are living, how to make it, how to make it practical in our life? Because somebody either you will be completely disconnected from the outside world, or you will be, you might end up making the wrong decision. That is what so I'm saying. That you take the principle. I understand that you cannot be completely disconnected, but you understand this fundamental <coughs> spiritual principle that the more one is disconnected from spiritual reality, mentally and physically, he becomes more entangled with the external material energy of the world. That is the principle. That is the principle. The more one is disconnected from the internal energy, he is more connected with external energy. The more one is connected with internal energy, he is disconnected from external energy. Prabhupada also made a point that this Krishna consciousness and not everybody can adopt. But if some people have this knowledge, then they can benefit from it. Meaning, Radhanath Swami was asked one time, what if everybody becomes like you? This question, you know. So he asked the question back, what do you do? He says, I'm an accountant. He says, what if everybody becomes an accountant? Mm -hmm. Then what will happen? So, even if let's say 1% of people don't vote or they don't know about politics and voting, who are we going to vote for? Ultimately, on a much deeper level, much deeper level, one politician cannot help a person. They simply start all of these wars and this because they're all 
entangled with illusory external energy of the Lord. Do you follow? Why are all of these wars we are fighting? Why we are on the brink of a third world war? What difference does it make if people do not understand spiritual principles? So, if I want to follow these instructions truly, mm -hmm. so I mean honestly, if I am truly being honest to myself, then I would be like every day I will be more renounced and I will end, end up the way I, I see it, I will end up leave, leaving every all the material yes. life. I will be like on the street and then I will I will just like in the big show on the old times they they used to take the even the food only from the what was donated to them and that way I will just chant and that's how I will spread Krishna culture. That will be the ideal. I mean, if I'm truly honestly in following this uh, instruction. Can I say something? You are actually right, Abhishek. You are absolutely right. However, if you are truly honest and if that mode of living satisfies you and gives you happiness then you should not be influenced by what the blind say if that mode of living makes you happy then why should anybody influence you otherwise and why have saints and sages all over the planet and even today why do people leave everything but it's not for everybody if you are going to really practice honesty. So, see, I don't want to dilute the message here. This is a very, very important message here, which is being spoken in every every paragraph here. Because if I see, I mix up the things and then I, because I try to apply some portion, some not portion, okay. then I'm still... One is theoretical knowledge and philosophical conviction. Other is this. I'm just going to try to make it work. Karma, Jnana, and Bhakti. Hari, you gave me the pen, but I, you know, I knew I was going to leave it at my I have, a, I have another one upstairs just for this situation. So, uh, Hari had full yeah, confidence in me. Oh, yeah. That little ceiling, that little, uh, by the window, there's a marker. Great. Brown marker. Yeah. 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 hundred years you should spend 25 years in student life 25 years in household life 25 years in retired life and 25 in the renounced order of life so maybe because you're going to your first period of your 25 and maybe second period of your 20 like maybe like i don't know how old you are point. i'm going to make one more point vika makes a good point vika. at 50 vika 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 vika, vika. vika. not vika I'm used to Vikings. Eh? Vikings! <laughs> <laughs> How are you used to Vikings? <laughs> so, like, so That's a joke, yeah. So, so, so the idea is that 50 years, they are anyway asking you to spend in retirement. And anyways, most people retire at the age of 60. Right? Whether you take a begging bowl in Govardhan or whether you are on a cruise, that's your choice. You're not working. For sure you're not working. Most people are not. Mm -hmm. Whether you are doing parikrama or whether you are doing good work. So this is important to understand. That's your choice. And that also is a mode of living which actually go to India. I go to all these holy places. In Haridwar, the, and I'm sure it's like that in every part of the world. I have been told that the monasteries in Rome are full. They're full. The monastery in Kentucky is also full. So people do take up that kind of life. Hari was in New York, there are 12 or 13 people, all day they're just chanting and dancing on the street. So there are hundreds of people who are doing that. But, but, there is a but, important but there. In the young age, when we are less than 50, as we, we, why? We got, we got, Victoria. Victoria, Victoria is, <laughs> mm, Victoria is, Karma, Jnana, Bhakti. If one is, is, is on the platform of karma, one can have theoretical knowledge or philosophical conviction. But internally, one may not find the mode of passion creates unlimited desires and longings, according to Gita. Mode of passion 
never lets us be satisfied with status quo. In mode of passion, only a job or a bank balance or money gives us security or a sense of self-worth. These are symptoms of passion. Karma, karma jnana bhakti, karma means action. You have to work. You have to work. So you can be theoretically convinced by reading nectar of instruction or get some philosophical conviction if internally one is not at the platform of jnana or bhakti, he cannot adopt that methodology right away. But But even within the realm of karma, even while working, one can still adopt the principles of not doing atyahara and not doing prayasa and focus on deeper aspects of life. Until one comes to this platform of jnana that actually I am not this body, I am a spirit soul. When one has this realization that I am spirit, I am not this body, one does not have them to work hard. For a person who self-realized, there is no duty. Third chapter of Bhagavad Gita. There is no duty. Because he does not have any purpose to fulfill. When one doesn't feel that my sense of self-worth comes from this and this and this and this, when one does not have unlimited longings and desires, then one doesn't have to work extremely hard. His work takes on a different nature, which is self-realization and also giving that knowledge to others. And then bhakti is again the topmost platform. So I want you to understand this principle and what Prabhupada is speaking in the, in the purport here. He talks about that these different glaciers, birth, old age, disease. We talked about being satisfied with simplicity. Yeah. Using what is ordained by Lord. Ishavasyam idam sarvam yat kincham jagatam jagat tena tyoktena bunjita ma vridha kasya sutta. Naturally by practicing Krishna consciousness one comes to a platform of simplicity. I should use what is required what is my need? Everything else belongs to Krishna mm -hmm. and for his service. It, no, yeah. So for you, um, how, how do we know what is what we need? When, when, when something is enough? Because you know, there's people that are millionaires, but they're like, oh, I don't have enough yet. Or there's people that are very simple, and they're like, this is enough for me. So how does one know like what is enough for them, what they need, what, what they don't need? Everybody is different. But Ashna, that's where chanting and attentive chanting comes into play. And everybody is different mm -hmm. according to how they interact with the material energy around them. Where's the market? Yeah, it's a microphone. Oh. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. That's around. I was recently in India, in a city called Surat. Mm -hmm. Who's committing suicide in Surat? The real estate builders, because the real estate market crashed. So they cannot sell their buildings, so they are jumping from the building, they build, and they are committing suicide. Wow. They are committing suicide. Ashna asked the question, how do I know what is enough? It differs for different people, but you know, there is no right or wrong answer to this question. That's where spiritual practice and taking shelter of the internal energy of the Lord comes into play. When one does that, one finds out, you know, that this much is enough. Anything above that, I'm engaging in prayasa. I'm simply taxing my mind and I'm losing my balance. Again, I looked at it in the in the jungle. Who's providing two hundred pounds of grain a year? So 
So Krishna provides what is needed. Yeah. And you know, some devotees, some very senior devotees, we see that they are like you know super materially well situated. And like for someone new, they look up to them, and then you know, like the intention is that okay, you know, let me try make some more money, uh, get better, and then I can help temple in a more way. But you know, if I have more money, I can donate more. Initial intention is like that, but. Uh, how can that you know someone who is new should should they even look up to those senior So no I like you may you making several different points. First you made somebody new may come in and see that a devotee is materially well situated mm -hmm. and be inspired by him. Okay? <laughs> well there are two three things here. <coughs> a devotee, a new devotee may also feel very inspired by simplicity and renunciation of somebody. It is not true that they are naturally inspired, but they may see that a devotee is well situated. He is doing his duties. He is also practicing bhakti yoga, meaning he is a good example of a life which is godly, God conscious. Plus, he is doing his material duties properly. It is never true that a genuine aspiring devotee will be inspired by somebody who has just a lot of money. You know, that may be his karma. You follow what I'm saying? And now you made another point about donating money or helping others. If somebody has ability or if somebody has already karma such that he can make money and he can use it using only what is needed for his maintenance and use it for service of humanity, service of Krishna, then that is okay. That kind of work will not entangle him. But then also you will see that the, the culture was that even the kings who had everything, they would renounce. They would renounce. Bhagavatam Prabhupada quotes Jivasa Tattva Jigyasa Na Yes Cheha Yes Karma Bhi. So what Prabhupada is saying here is three things. One's occupational duty One's occupational duty should result in knowledge Jnana Karma should give Jnana Religion, one who is practicing religion or spirituality He should get liberation Not excessive material prosperity that is not the goal. If you read the purport very carefully, in two pages Prabhupada makes this point, people who practice religion for material prosperity, it's under the category of laulya. Yes, it should lead to liberation or which is called nibratti. <coughs> and liberation, the desire for liberation should lead to devotional service Otherwise, that liberation is useless. So, one's occupational duty should lead to knowledge. One's religious and spiritual activity should lead to liberation. And one's liberation should lead to devotional service. Otherwise, this whole thing is useless. So, if somebody is like, like perfectly sheltered in the... Tatastha Shakti, if somebody is like following a spiritual master who has taken shelter of the of the Tatastha Shakti. No, not taking shelter of Tatastha Shakti, but the internal shakti. Okay, internal of uh, huh. Yeah, so if uh, oh yeah, the Antar an, Antaranga Shakti. Correct. So but so they can use millions of dollars uh, like of the like of the external energy, the Bahiranga Shakti, to engage more people in, in the in the internal process, they like even the, like some some millionaires, like they have they have sufficient detachment that they can say that I'm like not detached. Like some some the people in Mumbai, like million mil, millionaires. Warren Buffett. Well, uh, I don't know about I don't know about Warren Buffett, but if they're properly serving their spiritual master, then they can have that detachment. So there's no problem with having the million dollars. It's just the question of are you really under under. I the bona fide spiritual master, you know. That is correct. Hari, generally, wealth 
brings its its own issues. Yeah. However, I mean, you know, wealth really destabilizes a lot of people. Yeah. Wealth itself is not bad though. Mm -hmm. If it can be used properly for Krishna's service, then it has no problem. Yeah. But acquisition, maintenance of that requires a lot of energy. And if one doesn't naturally have karma for it, then to acquire it can be a lot of prayasa. Mm -hmm. Some people are naturally vicious. Mm -hmm. They have a natural knack for earning money. Mm -hmm. If they can do it, fine. But it's not for everybody. Some people, yeah, you're right. Some people are, you know, like Amrish Prabhu had four, mm -hmm. you know. There are a lot of people like that. But it's not for everybody. Our karma, when it is done as karma yoga, it leads to jnana. When we, when we dedicate the fruits of our action in Krishna's service, when we get knowledge that I'm not this body, I'm a spirit soul. I'm like, you know, karma, karma, jnana, bhakti, yoga, we have talked about this in Gita. Karma, jnana, bhakti. Jnana comes from nishkam karma yoga. The fruit of Nishkam Karma Yoga is knowledge. Nishkam Karma Yoga. The fruit, the mature fruit is one gets this knowledge that I'm not this body, I'm spirit soul. At that point, he can give up work himself. Um, Atyahara, Prayasa, Prajalpa. We, we discussed this one thing, the yoga of tongue already. Um, Prajalpa, here Prabhupada expands this into much many more things. He talks about, you know, TV or playing cards or debating useless social political schemes or playing cards. All, all of these things are in category of Prajalpa. Motivational speaking, Alec, generally brings people, depends upon what kind of motivation. What kind of motivation? Generally, it brings people to sattva guna or goodness. Generally speaking, motivational speaking. But motivational speaking could also be how to make more money. There are so many seminars about how to make more money. <laughs> how to do what so what kind of motivation is it you know what kind of mood I mean ultimately all of our classes are motivational speaking in one way bringing people to Krishna consciousness that's also motivation okay so Atyahara Prayasa and I want you to read this purport again with some of the insights we have discussed here Read this purport very carefully. What, what exactly is being spoken here? We realize all over the place. Dharmasya hi apavargasya. Religion should lead to liberation. This is Bhagavatam first chapter, second 2.9. Na artho arthaya upakalpate. Not for material emancipation. Na arthasya dharmaikantasya kamo labhaya hi smrita. And those who are actually, furthermore, one who is engaged in the ultimate occupational service should never use material gain to cultivate sense gratification. This is talking about those religionists who collect money from people for service of God. They should never use that money for personal sense gratification. Okay, so that's that. Okay, now we talked about prajalpa. Prajalpa Prabhupada gives some examples. Talking unnecessarily about mundane subject matters. Now, fourth category is very interesting. Niyam Agraha. Now, where did my paper go? Here it is.
this idea of niyama agraha and niyama agraha so niyam means rules so a agraha so niyam agraha the a with the line on top is called niyam agraha meaning accepting rules and regulation without understanding what is the purpose of them and niyam agraha is like whimsically rejecting rules and regulation and everything goes why is niyam agraha not good why because whatever we do whether we take say prasadana prayer whether we do any ritual at puja we clean the temple we chant hari krishna the purpose should be i want to come close to krishna i want to feel krishna's presence i want to actually serve krishna but if i am doing something not for that but for some other reason then it is niyam agra i am following the letter of the law but not the essence of the law what is the real essence of the law yes so i'm performing or i'm cleaning the temple with this consciousness that i want to eternally clean the kurja of the lord be there for the lord i want to clean and serve the lord keep his room empty i'm chanting hari krishna because i really want to be with krishna i'm offering aarti or puja or cooking or bhoga because i really want to be with krishna then it is not niyamagra so this makes a big difference otherwise also i should not do these things because anyways i'm not going to be with krishna so let me just throw the baby out with the bath water let me just not do anything forget it let me get a donut you know <laughs> might as well get a donut you know? might as well get a tim hortons let's just get a nice donut you know what difference does it have it's all good so 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 we whimsically rejecting or accepting but the mood is not correct the intentionality and the consciousness is not there so ritualism versus devotion ritualism is is yeah ritualism is not to be done So this is what niyam agra niyam agra. So we say rules. So Prabhupada is he he's given us four basic rules. Four basic. Need eating, listening, and gambling intoxication. But then I find it a little confusing. Like there's these lesser no uh, lesser rules. Like let's say that I wouldn't say lesser rules, but not Prabhupada was very clear. Do not eat chocolate. And then but so, but some devotees eat it. Some devotees don't eat it. You know it, it's is it. Uh, some people they if it, is it Krishna conscious is it not Krishna conscious you know so okay because it can't be offered to Krishna so it, you know this it becomes this whole thing between agraha and agraha I, I, like we can't correct anybody but we can we we don't want to break the rules either so it depends upon one's consciousness mm. let's say somebody is in mode of ignorance predominant. and i tell him don't eat chocolate kabe hale bolo ke bina wala what if somebody is in real transcendental goodness and you give him a chocolate milk shake to drink it's not going to be good for him mm. prabhu pad so ultimately what i understand is hari after this 20 years is that there is only one rule is to always remember krishna and to never forget him all the rules and regulations are subservient to this so this is actually a vedic aphorism you know smartavyo satatam vishnu asmartyo na jatu chit sarva vidhi nishedh rajan etam eva yo kenkara so remember krishna so this is actually vedas is saying 
that 24 hours always remember Krishna and never forget Krishna. So we have to engage in things that are conducive to this principle. And whatever rules plus regulations are, they should serve this overriding principle. What can help remember people remember Krishna? So a music, a devotee, a devotee who plays music, goes to a concert, writes up his own song on Bhagavad Gita, and sings in like a hard rock where everybody's drunk and everybody's on drugs. He just did this. What difference does it make if chocolate or onion and garlic in that situation? Does it make any difference? So there is a devotee, Dayal Neta in Cleveland. He has a band. It's called, uh, it's called, uh, I forgot, Don Fools. Don Fools. You can look him up. You can look him up. He's like, you know, the top 10 most famous Hare Krishna devotees in the world. He's like a punk rock, the metal rock, the hard rock, you know. When he's playing, everybody's drunk and everybody's on drugs. But he writes songs from Bhagavad Gita and play it. So now thousands of people are, 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 are aware of Bhagavad Gita. Go ahead. In other words, they're not like these people are not coming because uh, to get their like drunk and, and uh, drug. They come here, come there already because that's who they are. But at least they get a chance to hear <laughs> like your music about from heart. And maybe, maybe that's going to impact them and they actually can benefit and progress from yeah. where they are mm -hmm. now. So my, my basic question was, if it's directly breaking one of the four regular principles, like if I say that I can see Krishna and the beef stick. Okay, no, hold on. So write down four regular things. No meat eating. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> no gambling. Intoxication and illicit sex. Okay. Oh, not directly breaking regular principles. Prabhupada writes in the eighth canto of Bhagavad. 8th canto of Bhagavatam, I forgot which words, I was reading in Govardhan, that in terms of meat eating, only thing which is absolutely prohibited is killing of a cow. Mm. Humanity can never come to a platform of total vegetarianism. Mm. It's just not going to be possible. Prabhupada says, according to time, place and circumstances, Krishna can make concessions for devotees mm. who want to eat lesser <coughs> animals. But cow and bull killing is always sinful. So yes, you may not be able to see Krishna in that cow situation, but there is a lot of, in Prabhupada speaking in Journey of Self Discovery, page 173, Prabhupada speaking in New Orleans. And all of these are farmers down south. And you know, 1960s down south. I mean, basically they live on beef. So Prabhupada said that you want to eat, you can eat meat, but don't eat cow. Then he saw that, you know, people didn't really like this. So he said, okay, you want to eat cow, let the cow die naturally. Yeah. And then you can eat it. Let the cow die naturally, don't kill it. So Krishna and the beef stick. Mm. But these are, but this is not like, Proper. This is for like the, the Shudra level, right? But this is it. For yes. Brahmana consciousness, we right. get. Let's it depends like on consciousness. In the realm of our international society for Krishna consciousness, yes. like we cannot say that, oh yeah, you're a Shudra, so you can you can eat beer, you can eat beef. We can say that if we properly establish Varnashram, but we don't have like a Shudra initiation or anything. Like Generally speaking, in Kali Yuga, because of the availability of food, when there is no necessity, when there is no necessity, people who are cultivating a spiritual consciousness should not eat food which is full of violence. Mm. The principle is that. By that logic, in today's world, like even daily industry is not sustainable without violence towards power, like indirectly or eventually they are supporting the industry. Right. You're right. So practically, how is it? So practically, practically, we should all go vegan. That's the only solution to not support this. And a lot of devotees are, you know, it's, it's a discussion which is on the forefront of a lot of people 
who are trying to practice self-realization that is this something which is even ethical to do and this is a big question it's a big question mark until we establish like this uh, farm communities we do like have cow and the gbc <coughs> made a rule the our highest leadership made a rule by 2022 they do not want dt's they only want dt's to be served ahimsa milk they made a law by 2022 in all of our temples we want Krishna to be only served ahimsa milk mm -hmm. talking to your point now they can't legislate the behavior of each and every devotee that's why they made this rule if they could th what they're saying is drink ahimsa milk lot of our sannyasis gurus they ask for ahimsa milk some scientists have predicted by 2026 last time Which is not the way it is here. Right. So, Atyahara Prayasacha. <coughs> so, Hari, your question about <coughs> chocolate, you know? Yeah, I was just wondering yeah. because it's, uh, it's, I guess what you kind of answer, what I understood from your answer is that many different types of people come to Krishna consciousness. Some people would like to just follow the four regular pr principles, chant 16 rounds, and then that's, that's, it. They, do, that's it. They want to do their business. Yeah. Some people want to read the books get serious so pe people in different consciousness come to Krishna consciousness and then so yeah. and they're reciprocated accordingly is that kind Correct. of the they should determine what modes of nature and what modes of function is best for them okay. you know it's not an absolute like for example no illicit sex the way Prabhupada writes it's clearly sex for procreation and everything else is illicit Many spiritual masters in ISKCON during initiation, I was an in initiation in the Jumna Swami, he said, and no illicit sex, which means sex outside marriage. Mm. So here's another concession. Many teachers and many spiritual masters do openly engage and, and, uh, and uh, appreciate LGBTQ people in, in monogamous relationships. That's another, in monogamous, don't make faces, in monogamous relationships. Mm -hmm. They say, they say that you can, you can do whatever you like, but try to limit it as much as possible. They're doing service to them because it's impossible. Celibacy in the Prakriti today, the food, the water, the air, the culture, the environment, everything is contaminated. So they say it is, it is okay as long as you're monogamous. saying that it's like because you are um, not kind of like following not fulfilling your duties in uh, in one life that's when you like weren't first reborn like as a woman that you born into to like kind of like man's propensity and then in the following life if you don't fix it that's when you're born like and you are attracted to the same sex but they they're still souls Correct. they still want to go back to the so why yeah, yeah. Are they establishing farms? That's the idea. The idea is either you get it from a closer farm or stuff like that. Okay. So we discussed Niyamagraha. Jana Sangasa. Jana Sangha. Sangha is important here also. Sangha we talked about a little bit. Sangha Prabhupada explains we should not associate with karmis, jnanis or yogis. And he says that this is all like Atyahara. When we say Sangha means taking influence. Taking influence. Work relationships, relationships which happen casually, they are not Sangha. But if I start reading somebody's books and you know, you know, sometimes I read my Avadi books and I become really influenced by that, then I am taking Sangha. If I'm watching TV and excessively and I'm really become attracted to people, you know, then I'm taking Sangha. 
सो सो अत्यहार प्रयास प्रजल्पनियमाग्रह जन संग से लौल्यम च ग्रीड greed for excessive material prosperity prabhupad makes a point about religion brings dharma artha kama moksha but that's not the purpose of religion religious people attract you know good things in life but that's not the real purpose so this kind of whimsical dharma which attracts uh, money is called laulya these things destroy bhakti shadbir bhakti Vinashyate. Abhishek, did you got any clarification from my answer? Did that make any sense? Yeah, but I, I will later. I will discuss because there is a lot. Uh, yeah, let's discuss that later. Okay. Now there are six things which help spiritual life. One is being enthusiastic. This word enthus. So read the purport very carefully of text two and text three again. Enthusiasm. It comes from this word en theos. En refers in. Theo means theology or theosophy in God. This idea of being enthusiastic about something actually means that it's a emotion which is coming from God. So being enthusiastic. what does prabhupada write the definition of enthusiasm acting in krishna consciousness with intelligence is called enthusiasm so it's different from passion it's different from passion it's different from passion right why is it called action now somebody may think that devotional service means just sitting down and meditating or chanting hari krishna <coughs> Prabhupada says no. Devotional service means acting for the pleasure of Krishna. Yes, we should chant as much as we can. But what did Prabhupada did if when he came to New York, he is going to the park, playing the drum, writing books, translating books, distributing books from library to library, meeting people, organizing programs, speaking about Krishna, like that. So that's activity. and we should be enthusiastic about activity in krishna consciousness yeah, so like activity means motion like is chanting not a, like a it is so shravanam so he gives in the purport okay. shravanam kirtanam vishnu but he does not give credence to just sitting down and doing just meditation okay just meditation is not good everything should be there but it it's also says by doing one you get by only listening and for some people it, it may be okay for some people but for but for majority of the people he also gives a very beautiful definition of bhakti here anya bhilashita shunyam jnana karma so in the purport i'm reading purport page 27 anukulena krishna anushilanam bhaktir uttama So can somebody tell me what does this mean anya bhilashita shunyam page 27 purport the the sanskrit words i just read the definition of devotional service one should not have any other desire than to please krishna for activity what should be our desire to please krishna that's where you become free from passion charuta when activity is done with a desire to please krishna that's where we go beyond passion and come to goodness it's not just for my you know frantic you know it's not frantically done for some sort of ideal i want to accomplish but it is to please अन्याभिलाषिता शून्य ज्ञान कर्म आदि अनावृत इट इज नॉट कवर्ड ओवर बाय ज्ञान एंड कर्म कैन यू गिव मी एन एग्जांपल ऑफ व्हाट डिवोशनल सर्विस वुड लुक लाइक इफ इट इज कवर्ड ओवर बाय कर्म यू 
okay so having an ulterior motive i want something that's one example what other examples would look like that devotional service is covered over by karma Yeah, that will be also an example that I continue to pursue my material desires, material attachments, thinking that my chanting will nullify it. My devotional service is now covered over by karma. What other examples? Good point, Hari. Very good point. I would say uh, that there wouldn't be any real motivation because if it's just for an ulterior motive, once that's satisfied, you won't really have motivation. To once the motivation is satisfied. I, my devotional service becomes laxed. That means my devotional service was covered over by karma. Good point. Outright material motivation. After material motivation, no inspiration to continue in bhakti. Continuing bhakti but also maintaining my material attachments, thinking they will be nullified are all examples. Other examples of devotional service being covered over by karma. name fame all of this you know you know my my glory for bhakti okay very good other examples how about something is not going good in my job and i leave krishna and i go to you know maybe i should wear a stone maybe i should wear a ring maybe i should do some kind of puja maybe i should do something auspicious things would this be an example of devotional service being covered over by karma, by fruitive activity, by a fruitive desire. So even the purest things, like if somebody's like, the same example, if somebody has problem with their job, and then they say, I want to do parikrama of the temple. That's, yeah. also, that's no, a process no. of bhakti, but but they have some motive. I want to offer a dhamma to them because I want all those things okay. to go up. Okay, no. for example, I am losing my job, but I pray to Krishna to keep my job. Because Krishna, I need my job in this station of my life to be stable and well situated to offer bhakti. That is not devotional service being covered over. But Krishna, if this job is not coming, I am not coming back here. <laughs> or if I lose my job, it is because you know this that this whole system doesn't work. <laughs> then it is covered over by karma. Yeah. Is it covered over or is it something I need to engage in bhakti so that my mind is peaceful? Mental stability is required for chanting and for dancing and for help serving Krishna. Krishna, I need this for my mental stability. Not too much. You know, I don't need a Mercedes Benz to, for my mental stability. <laughs> you know, that would not be a good example. But I probably need a job. Most people need a, a source of economic sustenance. Some devotees may ask for a life partner. Uh, Krishna, at this point in my life, I feel I need a, 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 a conducive life partner to engage in bhakti yoga. Asking Krishna for things which will help us serve Krishna is not necessarily covering devotional service. There may be a little mixture there. Of course, it's not pure, but you know, like that. Some people live in difficult marriages and relationships just because they realize that you know they will not be peaceful you know without that it's not that their bhakti is covered over that it's like there's maybe a some mixture there but it's not necessarily covered over covering means bhakti is less important other things are more important one example is given is should a devotee go to a funeral of a relative Prabhupada explains that if a devotee just chant Hare Krishna he will do much better service to that relative but then people will become antagonistic so he may go and he may do certain things just to satisfy people around him so that they are favorable to bhakti and they don't criticize him his bhakti is not getting covered over but if he thinks if i don't do this ritualistic activity my devotion is finished or this will have no meaning if i don't do this then there is a there is a covering. So there's a difference between covering, avratam, versus 
other ideas. There could be a small mixture sometimes. It's not necessarily a covering. It is something which a devotee can honestly acknowledge. Or sometimes a devotee do certain things because overall arching goal is that people will become more favorable to Krishna. Yeah, but could you draw a little bit more on that last point that if you go to the funeral mm -hmm. and you believe that if you don't do like that specific kind of service and you know that people are against and you know that after that you're like all your service doesn't make any sense. I don't really get how it it's sounded like because to me, like, it, uh, like if to the point that I want to go, like, I need, I feel like I have a strong necessity to present this service because otherwise, like, I'm breaking my like principles and my like un understanding and what I believe in, and I go and I do despite, um, despite these other people. How is it covering? 